everybody, super excited for School of Knock Season 2. Last year we talked about several things relating to form and technique, but this year we're going to get into a whole new category, and over the next several classes, we're going to walk through multiple details that are going to help you convert from being a hunting-specific archer over to a target specific archer or even vice versa. The concept behind this year's School of Knock is to really allow you to become a hybrid archer because this is one thing that you've heard me talk about many, many times. I'm a better bow hunter because I'm a target archer and I'm a target archer in order to be a better bow hunter. And I think this is something that all of us can learn from. And more importantly, I think it's something that all of us need to do in order to really understand how accurate we can be, but also it's going to help us deal with being more accurate and better archers and better bow hunters in pressure type situation, whether that's dealing with shooting for a medal or dealing with buck fever. So over these next few weeks, I'm going to talk about several specific categories that allow your bow to somewhat convert from either being a target archer or a bow hunter, but more importantly, finding that segue point that allows us to be the best of both. So for this first School of Knock segment, I want to give you an introduction to walk you through some of the things that we're going to be covering over these next several weeks so that if you need to make any type of adjustments or pre-purchases for different types of equipment that you might see coming, you'll have the opportunity to do that. Now, how far you go with this or how deep you dive into this pool is certainly up to you. I can tell you that I've been beyond head deep in both of these categories and hopefully if you're a target archer and you're exploring the hunting world you might go a little bit further after this series than even you thought you would go and likewise if you're a hunter that's really enjoying the school and ox series but wanting to know even though I was this accurate, how are these guys that are target archers becoming this accurate? And I think that I'm going to be able to bridge that gap between the two over this series. So to give you a look at what we're going to be talking about over the next 8 to 10 weeks, I'm going to show you the different categories that I'm going to break down. But I'm also going to show you exactly the types of things that I teach high-level teams to relate to multiple aspects of being a high-level archer. So the first thing that we're going to talk about during one of those first weeks is going to be how to take your bow and change out those limbs in order to shoot a lighter poundage. There's a lot of things that go into that and we'll talk about that throughout that series but I am going to show you exactly how to change out the limbs on your PSEs, Matthews, and your Hoyts. It's going to be a cool series that shows you just how easy this is to do if you are an intermediate to advanced at-home bow mechanic. The next thing that we're going to talk about is we're going to get into detail about different types of sights and how these sights can help you become a more accurate archer. And we're going to talk about the differences between multi-pin sights and single pin sights, and also how the distances of your sights relates to your accuracy. In addition to that, we're going to talk a little bit more about different types of apertures and even the ability for you to start shooting a magnified aiming reticle if you're truly going to convert deeper into that target world. Now with that, the next subject that we're going to talk about is the importance of your rear sight and how it relates to that front sight that you're choosing. So in that next series, we're going to talk in depth about your peep sight and how the importance of your peep sight and the size of your peep sight can not only affect your accuracy, 
but also the type of light that you're gathering and how to shoot with either one eye open or both eyes open or even how to train yourself to do that or how to train yourself to shoot with a magnified lens if you're learning from the first time. From there, we're gonna segue into all the different types of arrows that you're gonna be able to shoot. There's a lot of different kinds on the market and all of them have specific purposes, but what do those purposes really mean in relation to how you are accurately on your target? And more importantly, whether you're an indoor shooter only or whether you're gonna go outdoors and shoot some events like a local 3D course or even really stretching it out on those long range targets of the tack. How do your arrow choices and your point choices affect those decisions? Then from there, we're gonna talk more about veins and vein types and show the importance of how different veins are actually going to give you different results down on the targets. And depending on your conditions and your situations, how those choices are gonna have an immediate impact on your accuracy. Now on the same subject matter, we're gonna also talk about your choices of knocks and knock sizes and also how your serving size can directly impact your accuracy because of those knock choices. We're also gonna talk about shorter stabilizers, heavier stabilizers, why do some target archers shoot a longer stabilizer? Why are some people deciding to shoot an offset bracket in that V-bar? And we're gonna do some tests showing you specifically how those choices affect the same exact bow and the same archer downrange and through paper because those types of things have an immediate effect. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is how your choices of release aids and how you shoot different release aids immediately impact your accuracy and how that there is a difference between learning that dynamic shot but also learning the ability to have patience and some staticness inside of that shot routine and how learning to aim as you're continually being dynamic can greatly affect your accuracy, but also dramatically improve your patience on the target and help you as a hunter learning how to have that target slightly moving or battling wind conditions, but still having the patience to pull through on that target. So one of the things that we're gonna talk about and what I wanna finish on for this particular school of knock is I'm gonna have you come over here and I'm gonna write on the chalkboard some of the really important details and aspects that I cover when I work with large teams for long periods of time. Last year we talked about one very specific aspect of shooting and that's proper technique, having proper form. But that's only one, one really small puzzle piece of being a completely well-rounded archer. So what I like to teach people is there's actually three different aspects that are critical to becoming a well-rounded archer. And what's important to these is each one of these things might be at a higher level during different types or different points of time in your career. There might be times where one is much larger than the others, but what's important is they all fall upon each other and they all support each other in a very unique type of way. So what I teach people is there's three super important things that you have to know. One of the things is going to be your P. The next thing is gonna be your E, and your last thing is gonna be your M. I tell people this is your PEM. Now for any of you Step Brothers fans, just to clarify, this is PEM, not PEM, no two N's, 
this whole Pam Pem thing, I know you might not be getting it, but believe me, by the end of this series, you are going to get it. So let me elaborate on these three important aspects to being a top-level archer. The P stands for the physical. And within that physical, I break that down into two different subcategories which one we've already covered in detail in the School of Knox season one, and that is your technique or your form. Now, at any time, if you haven't watched that or you feel like your form or technique is starting to break down, that's a series that I don't need to repeat, but it's a series that you can easily go back and continue to watch again and build on because that series is exactly what I do every year when I come off a hunting season. I decide to go into the range and start with those simple things, the power of four, getting those reps in, focusing on each one of those steps in a series, working on my stance, working on my grip, working on the shoulder position, the anchor position, acquiring the peep sight, learning to pull through and finish. I work on each of those things every single year as a way to wipe that slate clean during the off season. Now the next thing that's within the physical is gonna not just be your technique, but it's gonna be your training. And for your training, this actually breaks down into two separate categories as well. One of the categories is gonna be your practice. The other is going to be your physical weight training and what type of condition you're in in order to complete the physical. Now, one thing I'm excited about is down the road, you are gonna get an all new training series with two super critical partners that I'm bringing in with me on a brand new knock fit segment and series coming up later this spring. Now the E is gonna stand for your equipment. And this is one of the things that we're gonna cover intently and deeply this next year as we go through this next school of knock because we're going to break this down into multiple categories to where you are able to have your own knowledge base of what your gear does for you. One of the things that I really think is important is that athletes understand their equipment just as much as their shops, their coaches, or the people that they're dependent upon putting that gear in their hand. Because for me, confidence came with understanding what my gear does and why it does or doesn't perform. And that's going to be the focus of this year's School of Knock is the equipment and how you can get that equipment to 100% of its capabilities. Now, the last thing is the M, which is the mental or the mentality aspect of being a high-level archer, a top-notch, seal-a-deal bow hunter, etc. Now, what I will say is the mental side is something that we continually talk about throughout the entire year in the Knock On podcast. This is something that I have great guests on and that we go into detail continually throughout the year. So if you're not familiar with the Knock On podcast, make sure you start listening to those and don't be afraid to go into the search and look for the ones that are specific to mentality. Today I had a great guest on and we talked about how to be prepared, how to set goals, how to come through in clutch situations, how to visualize, and just how to be an awesome competitor. And that was with a 20 time, 20 plus time world medalist and former Olympian. I continually have great guests on that are gonna help within this category. So hopefully you're excited for the up and coming School of Knock. 
This is the introduction to what you're going to be learning through these next several weeks. So if you're an at-home bow mechanic, make sure you lube up that bow press. If you're looking to get some lighter limbs, make sure you make that happen because next week we're going to start with breaking down a bow and showing you just how easy it is to put it all back together. Welcome to season two, School of Knock.